This is a, a genuine pleasure to welcome uh, Secretary Mattis to Israel. I've heard a lot about him, read a lot about him, um, and I, I think this is a, a propitious um, moment. Israel has no better friend than America. America has no better friend than Israel. And this is a, a, a partnership based on common values in the deepest sense of the word. Uh, we sense uh, a great change in the direction of American policy. And we'll go back to Hannity. Now, that was Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speaking earlier today, right before his meeting with the Defense Secretary Mattis, right here in Jerusalem. And here's part two of our interview. So I had an opportunity today mm -hmm. to get on a, a chopper, mm -hmm. and Israel is about the size of the state of New Jersey. Yep. It's not a very big country, right. and you're surrounded by Lebanon and Syria and Jordan and Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, at times historically not always friendly countries. And when you look at the borders, you w at different points we are literally a mile or two away from where some of your enemies are. Do you think most people understand the security concerns here? Probably not, because it's hard to imagine. You just have to compress the United States to, as you said, the size of New Jersey, and then put in a lot of uh, militant Islamists with uh, short-range, middle-range, long-range weapons, suicide uh, bombers, uh, trying to cross into your territory, uh, terror tunnels being dug into you. So obviously Israel has uh, security challenges unlike any other country. But Israel is unlike any other country because it's New Jersey, but it's New Jersey with F-15s and F-16s. And bigger. And, well, courtesy of American help, by the way, which mm -hmm. we appreciate, F-35s, and a very robust army. Uh, a citizen army that is willing and able to defend ourselves by ourselves. And this is the secret of our success. We've been able to, you know, throw away all, uh, all these attackers, repel all these dangers by the will of our people to defend ourselves. But in so doing, we've found partners in the region because they're being attacked by the same militant Islamists and they realize that Israel is not their enemy, but their crucial ally in warding off the same threats. So yes, Israel is small, but Israel is powerful. Maybe uh, Israel is attacked, but Israel is able to defend and occasionally attack our offenders. Maybe an unintended consequence, and I remember the speech that you gave before a joint session of Congress. I know at the time President Obama was not exactly happy with it, but I thought it was one of your more powerful speeches mm. that I had seen. But maybe an unintended consequence of this bad Iranian deal, and I concur with your conclusions about this, the nuclear-armed Iran is A squared, B squared, C squared, radical mullahs, weapons of mass destruction, threaten, threatening to wipe Israel off the map is not a consequence the world should ever see. I'm threatening you and, threat and all your allies. Well, we're the, we're the great Satan. Right. You're the little Satan. We're, we're the close by. We're the, you're, you're the, close, the, we're the closer Satan. Right. We're, we're, the, we're a mini United States right here in the Middle East. Well, the only democracy in the region. The West stops the, here. The West stops here. Mm -hmm. So my, my question is this. As an unintended consequence, there seems mm -hmm. to be maybe an alliance that a couple of decades ago wouldn't have been possible That's right. with the Saudis, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, as they fear Iranian hegemony and a nuclear-armed Iran here. There's no question that the deal with Iran, which paves the way to eventual Iranian acquisition of the critical elements of nuclear bombs, a nuclear arsenal, something we don't accept and never sign on the deal, and we won't let it happen. But because many in the region are threatened by that same Iran and would be immeasurably threatened more by a nuclear-armed Iran, that has brought a lot of the countries in the region to a different thinking about Israel. And so I think this is potent with possibilities, uh, ultimately for peace, but certainly for our common security. And I think there's a recognition of that today uh, in Washington by President Trump, by Secretary Mattis, with whom I just met. You met with him earlier, uh, yeah. Yes, and, and, and by Secretary Tillerson. I talked to him as well. 
I think we realize that we face common challenges. And the greatest challenge is the challenge of, uh, challenge of militant Islam of both kinds. The Shiite variety led by Iran, the Sunni variety led by ISIS. Of the two, both have to be rolled back and defeated. But of the two, the greater long-term danger is from Iran. It's a country of 80 million. It's got oil. Uh, it's got other resources. It's developing submarines, developing precision-guided uh, rockets and, and missiles. It's developing, uh, uh, it's developing nuclear weapons down the line, uh, satellites. That's, have that power in the hands of a militant Islamic regime and the whole world is threatened. And therefore, you know, a lot of in the Arab world understand it. We in Israel understand it. And I could say today that Washington understands it. That's an important change. That's an, well, okay, you finished where I was going. Let me, so many instances, we see what's happening now with, with North Korea and they're in, in the news and you got Pyongyang saber rattling and they're out there suggesting about the United States that they're warning of a super mighty preemptive strike against the U.S. I want to do a little history lesson here because I have a tape of then President Bill Clinton he had given the, the North Koreans $4 billion with the promise they wouldn't get nuclear weapons. I'm going to play that tape. I'm going to follow that tape with a tape of Susan Rice, John Kerry, and Barack Obama saying the red line in the sand in Syria, that that would prevent any further use of chemical weapons, that it eliminated all of Assad's chemical weapons. And then I'll play Obama's promise that his nuclear deal with Iran, $150 billion, would prevent the Iranians from ever getting a nuclear weapon. Now, we're wrong about North Korea, and we're wrong about chemical weapons in Syria. Are we going to be wrong on Iran and what it would mean to the world? Let's play those statements. This is a good deal for the United States. North Korea will freeze and then dismantle its nuclear program. South Korea and our other allies will be better protected. We were able to find a solution that actually removed the chemical weapons that were known from Syria in a way that the use of force would never have accomplished. Russia has been constructive in helping to remove 100 percent of the declared chemical weapons from Syria. People may criticize us for not having uh, uh, launched missiles against uh, Assad after chemical weapons uh, had been used, but keep in mind why we didn't. We didn't because you they got rid of the chemical weapons. Today, the United States, together with our allies and partners, has reached a historic understanding with Iran, which, if fully implemented, will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Your reaction? I want to give credit to President Obama for the things we cooperated on, a lot of things, uh, including signing uh, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, for uh, a 10-year support for Israel. But we had our disagreements, too. And the most fundamental disagreement was about Iran. I think the deal paves the way for, Iran's, uh, for Iran to get to a bomb. And I think it also paves the way for Iran's economy to get untold billions of dollars with which they can not only fund their nuclear arsenal, but also found, fund their aggression, which since the deal was signed has been growing in the region. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's important to recognize that. I think President Trump does. I think it's important to take uh, action, uh, both political action and uh, diplomatic action and economic sanctions actions, and also to take military action as President Trump did against Iran's proxy, Syria, when it used uh, chemical weapons. I think that is an important change. 